Um, well, look, if Manchester United finish in the top four, they're going to do so without Ashley Young playing at the football club. I think, first of all, let's, let's kind of talk about that move. In many ways, we talk about going abroad as a brave thing to do, yet the Premier League is full of amazing foreign players and we never talk about them being brave for coming to the Premier League. It's a great thing to do, isn't it? Go and play abroad and experience another culture, another team, another league. Oh, it's amazing. I went at a year in France where I actually absolutely loved and I had two, two and a half years in America at the end of my career and both times, like family-wise, football-wise, you know, it's a great experience. I, I wouldn't say it's brave. I think, you know, I can understand what the foreign players have to come here because this is where the big money is and they want they want to do that. But for English players, I think it's just exciting. These All these young players now, like Sancho's, who've gone out and done it and come back, it's, it's unbelievable. And I, if I could do it all again, I, I'd probably stay longer in France and longer in America because I just absolutely love the whole experience. How did your move come about? <laughs> Why are you laughing? <laughs> so the thing, it was funny because I was actually playing golf. I was playing at, um, I think it was Motcham Hall with Ryan Giggs and I was actually one up on the 16th. Nice, um, well remembered. Yeah, I do remember it because I remember that's when I got a phone call from uh, Sir Alex Ferguson yeah. to say that he wanted to see me. And I said, OK, Alex, I guess I'll, I'll see you tomorrow morning. He said, no, 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 I'm at a golf club. So I'm thinking, what, what's he doing at the golf club? You know, like, it's like one of those you're thinking, you know, like a, when your mum or dad call, you think, what yeah. have I done? You know what I mean? <laughs> and it was one of them, it's like the march to death, walk yeah. of death, I'm going so slow. So anyway, I get there and he's sitting in the car, uh, in his car, and he said, I'll come in. So I sit and I said, yeah, you right? I said, yeah, yeah, yeah. Started waffling and off and saying, oh, how great you've been, and X, Y, and Z. Yeah. Um, and then he said, by the way, we've just accepted the 8.5 million bid from Inter Milan. Wow. And I was like, Phew. Wow, because I was thinking about signing me to testimony. I've been at United for six years. So you, uh, you didn't see this coming at all at this point? No, no, no. I, I, I'd heard some grumblings that there was some interest which for me and Eric Cantona at the time um, after the Crystal Palace thing, but that was it. Uh, I was coming to end my contract. I was negotiating another one in testimony in our times. We had mm. testimonies after 10 years. Um, and then he said, right, we've got a new stand, we've got a new training ground coming, we've got Nicky Buck coming through. Um, and we think it's the right time to... In other words, can you pay for the new standard? Yeah, yeah, yeah that type yeah. of thing. And it's funny because once I've got the green light, once the club accepts a fee for you, you kind of feel yeah. that they don't want you. So then I then obviously start speaking to Inter Milan. Um, everything was going great, sort the contract out. They then had to come over to my house in, in Bremel, where I used to live in Manchester. There was about an entourage, about four of them there was. You know what I mean? Like the Mafia, it was kind of scary to me. <laughs> um, sat in the kitchen, um, Sort of all the contract, my agent was there, and all of a sudden the phone rang. And it was Sir Alex Ferguson. He was in Colorado Spitz, uh, Springs in Aspen. And he said, Oh, Paul, 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 listen, I've, you know, I've been thinking about it, and, I've, and I want you to stay now. Oh, what? And I said, I said, I said, I said Gaffy, you're absolutely joking. I've got oh. four Inter Milan officials out, aficionados in the kitchen, two of them about a six foot four, so you know what I mean? I've, <laughs> I've got some paper about to sign, and there's actually no way now that I'm not going to sign a contract. Right. And he said, OK, I wish you all the best, put the phone down. And I was off. Did, did, did you not want to leave? No. no I'm you're happy, happy. Would you stay there for the rest of your career? But that's why I was sorting out, you know, another four or five years, testimonial. Yeah. I just had a baby, which was Thomas. You know, so I was, I was happy. You know, everything was going great. What changed you know? his mind, do you think? I don't know. It's a strange. I think that season, 95, 96, we lost to um, West Ham. Last game we seen, which lost to the league. We lost to Everton in the FA Cup final. So it's probably the worst two weeks I've had at Manchester United, losing the league and losing the Cup mm. final. Um, uh, so I don't, know, I don't know what changed his mind but for me it was the best thing I ever did yeah. and it was tough in the way because Joey in book talks about the culture and the change and learning another language it was tougher for me because it was full of Italian players in, in, the, mm. in the 96, mm. 97 yeah. you know, and everyone spoke Italian naturally and I'm sitting at the end of the table mm. haven't got a word I don't understand a word they say and the first two months I was terrible my yeah. football was rubbish I was playing left wing yeah. Uh, and, and I just thought, I want to come back. You know, I really, really did. And then Hodgson came in, uh, the manager got sacked, Hodgson, Roy Hodgson came in, played me set midfield, yeah. and things started to really pick up. And once I learned the, the language, it was the best thing I ever, ever did. And I, I, I would have stayed longer, we just started, I said, stay for two years, and we signed Ronaldo for next year. And I was thinking, I want to go, you know, but for family reasons, I came back. For players nowadays, it's a lot easier to go out there because they all speak English, and it's yeah. easy to settle in. That type mm. of stuff. Um, but Joe, right, it's the best thing I ever did in my career. And I remember you fondly. What was the game we were doing where you were. Was it at Wembley? Yeah, we did the Tottenham Inter Milan game, didn't we? Yeah. Obviously, being Paul Ince and 
a shrinking violet he was standing in front of the <laughs> and <laughs> chanting for the governor. The Italian league then was stronger than the <clears throat> than the English league, would you say? It's the, it was the best. The Italian league was the best league. Yeah, the best players were in that league. You know what I mean? I'm, yeah. I mean, with Baggio, Baresi, Red Zidane, Mancini. I mean, you could Viali. You know, when you talk about great, great Very players, great. Player. who gave you the nickname, the governor? The governor was one of the f nickname I got from Dagenham. Funny enough, because it is when I used to play snooker, so I'm a snooker player. All right, and every time someone used to hit a shot or put a one, we used to shout, "Who's the governor?" Yeah. So then when I went to Mate United, I was doing some shooting practice against Peter Schmeichel, and I smashed one in the top man's stance, right? Yeah. And I, I went, "Who's the governor?" <laughs> so every time I score, Brian could just call me the governor, and it just kind of stuck. Next minute, so I got a number plate with a like gov on it, and yeah. it, it was great, you know what I mean? But um, it's a bit embarrassing at all. Brilliant. Did, did Brilliant. Your, does your story about playing a broad match up to <laughs> in season? Right. So he's talking about Serie A with Beppe Signore Viali. I was in the I was in the Swedish second division. <laughs> I was 17. We've lost them. Let's move on, eh? <laughs> what was the team? Well, IFK Hasselhoff. <laughs> do, you know, do you know what, right? It was what? the best thing I ever did. I was 17, you know. I'm not, I'm not playing scary. for Man United. And, mm. You know, I, I took myself out of my comfort zone. Um, I went with another lad and we had, we had the best time. It was it was brilliant. We weren't mm. playing. It was so hard to get in, in Tottenham's first team at that time. I went out, I played games, I enjoyed it. It wasn't into Milan, but it was a great it was a great <laughs> it was scary experience. At 17, though, to do that. It was, you know. Yeah, and I, I, it was good. It was, it was a great experience. And it definitely helped me.